Welcome back to another True Stories from Backstage. This week I want to talk about uh, a country legend that just passed away. Um, it's all over the news. Toby Keith. Uh, in the 90s, he had so many hits. He was he was huge into the 2000s. And uh, sad to hear that he uh, lost a battle with, with cancer. Um, but uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you about a few memories that I have with Toby. Um, I've got to work with him directly and indirectly a few times over the years, and I just wanted to share with you guys a couple cool stories about Toby Keith. The first one was back in the 2008-2009 era, something like that, but uh, I got a call to come to the studio and do uh, just be a utility musician. I got Basically, I got hired because I could play piano and guitar, and they were saving some money. I, uh, later on, I kind of figured that out. But I got hired to come uh, to the studios in Ohio, uh, a songwriter um, who's also passed away now. Uh, hey, I'm editing the video, and I realized that I didn't say the songwriter's name. His name was Wayne Perry. Uh, I was a friend of his nephew, and that's how I got the call. Wayne wrote uh, songs for Tim McGraw, for Backstreet Boys, for Lori Morgan, for Toby Keith, Desert Saints, a bunch of uh, awesome Nashville people, and Wayne was a, a great fella. And just wanted to add that in there because I realized that I just kind of said, that's a songwriter that hired me, blah, blah, blah. But I want to give Wayne his due. He was a great fella. All right, back to the video. When, uh, you know, things might have changed now, but back then when a big artist was going to do a new album, they would call these songwriters and say, I'm going to do a new album. Anyway, this guy got the call, and uh, he, Toby wanted, um, I think, I think he wanted, or the powers that be wanted 40 songs. So they gave, they told this songwriter to bring in 10, this one to bring in 10, like that. So I came up and I played on 10 tracks. Uh, at the time, I didn't know I was playing on them for Toby's new album. And I, you know, it's just to demo the songs, to pitch to uh, Toby and his people. You know, my playing never made it on a record or anything like that. But I got up there and I played on, uh, did a session in one day, and I played piano and uh, acoustic guitar and electric guitar on ten demos. Uh, and in the middle of working on them, I found out that uh, these songs were going to Toby Keith. So that was kind of cool. I mean, like I said, indirectly, uh, you know, and hopefully it's kind of neat to think that that those songs made it all the way there and, and Toby and uh, his, you know, his posse were all sitting around and listening to these songs and and uh, I got to play on them. But uh, years later, uh, in my arena show life, we were doing a Toby Keith show, and it was the infamous show in Pikeville, Kentucky, where Toby jumped off the stage and uh, got slightly physical with uh, somebody. Toby said he had no idea why, but the guy just came up to the edge of the stage, poured his beer all over the stage, flipped him off, and started leaving or something. And Toby loses his cool, jumps off stage, and you can see, there's some videos on YouTube that you can see Toby grabs a guy behind the neck, you know, and look puts his head to his head and just says whatever to him. And the security guards, you know, uh, come in and get Toby back on the stage. And um, uh, the guy disappears with his wife, I guess, never to be seen or heard from it again. So it all happened very fast, but it was uh, a wild thing to see Toby jump off the stage and uh, confront that guy who was basically, in Toby's eyes, disrespecting him big time right in the middle of a show. During that show, this is a funny thing. Uh, about Toby and a cool memory that I had. So I was, uh, during that show, I was over the, uh, you know, different departments like labor, the stagehands, the riggers, spotlights, you know, all those kind of people and the runners. And um, runners are people that we hire every show and they literally just, they have a vehicle out in the parking lot and they just sit in a chair or they hang out in catering or something and they wait until somebody needs them to go get something. And it can be as crazy as I've, uh, I was doing a concert once and, uh, one of the guitar players wanted these weird organic cigarettes. 
I mean, really organic, you know, like clove cigarettes or something. And the guy drove about two and a half hours uh, to a store in another state and got them and brought them back. And it could just be that the runner takes uh, the artist or the – lots of times the runner doesn't do anything but take the bus drivers to the hotel. And then at the end of the night, they go pick the bus drivers up and bring them back. But they could be going to the store. They could be doing going buying batteries. They could – it's anything. Anyway, that being said – so uh, I'm backstage, and um, Toby Keith's manager, or the tour manager, I, I would say, uh, comes up and says, hey, do we have any available runners? I said, yes, I got one right over there. Well, Toby Keith wants to go to Captain D's and eat. And uh, I was like, well, we can, you mean like w- you want to send the runner to go get some Captain D's and bring it back to Toby? No, he just wants to go to Captain D's and eat. So I'm like, Okay, you know, you, you just never say no. You just figure it out, and you're like, well, that's there's one, you know, five minutes from the arena. Captain D's, okay. So I get the runner over, and I tell them, hey, uh, run Toby Keith uh, to Captain D's. And uh, they were like, what do I do? I sit in the car. I said, I guess so, or ask him when you want to pick him back up or whatever. So uh, they run him to Captain D's, and the – of course, the runner is just completely like, I don't know what to do. And Toby's like, well, come on in. Uh, you can eat, too. So the so Toby Keith, right before, you know, before a show, after sound check, goes to Captain D's with my runner. And the runner sits across from him. And he orders a three-piece catfish dinner and proceeds to sit and eat a catfish dinner with my runner. And I guess they just had some small talk. And I asked the runner, did he eat? And he was like, no, I I just sat there. But uh, so Toby ate his three-piece catfish dinner, and uh, they jumped back in the uh, runner's vehicle, and they came back before the show. So uh, I thought that was, on one hand, it was awesome. You know, you got Toby Keith uh, just sitting there at a local town eating Captain D's. Nobody knew he was there. Nobody, I guess, put it together. I don't know how that worked out. But, um, yeah, and then he came back. I thought that was awesome that he was just that chill and that he wanted the runner to come in and just jaw with him while he was there. So, uh, uh, yeah, Toby Keith, uh, he'll definitely be missed. I was looking forward to working with him again. And um, he was awesome, one of those standard country guys, you know, that uh, that uh, wrote those classic, uh, those classic lyrics. But, anyway, Toby Keith... Captain D's jumping off the stage, protecting, uh, being gallant, protecting some lady. It was a fun adventure, and uh, he will be missed. True story.